Welcome to the Jeff Crilly Show. And now, here's Jeff Crilly. Welcome back to the final segment of the Jeff Crilly Show. I'm excited about this because, you know, when I got to Dallas uh, in 1992, we really didn't have the arts scene that we do today. And and now I think, you know, uh, everybody in New York and L.A. would have to agree that there's not a vast wasteland in the middle of the country, that there is some great culture and some great arts uh, in, in Dallas. And so uh, my guest right now, now are, are part of the Dallas Arts Culture uh, Board Fair. Uh, they have a an event coming up that they want to talk about. I'm going to have each one of you introduce yourselves. Uh, why don't sure, you start? Sure, sure. Good morning. My name is Symmetria Goodson, and I'm an attorney with Madry PLLC. It's an art and startup law firm, intellectual property firm here in Dallas. And I am co-chair for the Leadership Arts Program, which is uh, putting on the event in conjunction with Business Council for the Arts. Hi, I'm Mia Fritzi, and I'm an architect with the Beck Group. Hi, I'm Lillian Gearing, and I am an interior designer and studio director with Gensler. Well, awesome. Thank you all for coming in. Well, what do you want people to know, and, and how can people get involved? Sure. So, so we are here today to talk about our arts, the Dallas Arts and Cultural Board Fair, which is happening next Thursday. And this is an opportunity for lovers of the arts, uh, patrons, business leaders to meet with local arts organizations who will be at the event who are looking to expand their board of directors. So it's a wonderful opportunity. And you have some big names that are part of your board, don't you? And in terms of just the, the uh, almost it's a who's who as I was looking at the list of the, of the, of the people who are, are active. Um, why don't you rattle off some of the big names of, of the, um, the members? So some of the organizations that are coming to the board fair that are looking for new board members um, are, you know, the Dallas Children's Theater, Big Thought, Dallas Summer Musicals, um, Kitchen Dog Theater, uh, Business Council for the Arts, who is our, you know, patron, will be there as well. Um, Metropolitan Winds. Do you guys have any others? Uh, the Dallas Holocaust Museum will be there as well, wow. as well as Caramia Theater. And those are big names. So the the idea is that um, all of these wonderful organizations really need great leaders. Is that right? And th- and that's what the the board fair is about. That's exactly right. So we're trying to create awareness of the nonprofit organizations that are involved in cultural um, good for the community to uh, pair volunteers, future board members, et cetera, so uh, the next generation can get involved. So one of the comments we got actually today was, oh, I don't know anything about art. I can't go. And that's not the point of what this board fair is. It's honestly um, people that know about art don't know anything about business. And so they need business leaders and lawyers and accountants and problem solvers to help run their organizations and be on their board. And so this is a way to bridge those business individuals with the arts. That's, that's, would, that's brilliant. I would add, if you're an individual that is um, concerned about uh, arts and culture or cares about arts and culture, you're someone that should come to the board fair. Um, I would say if you're also an individual that it wants to be involved with the future of Dallas and what's going on with various organizations here in Dallas, you should also come to the board fair. So this is a one-of-a-kind, unique opportunity to actually meet and talk one-on-one with organizations looking for board members. So if somebody's listening right now and saying, well, gosh, I would like to get more involved. I'm, uh, I'm a, uh, an accountant. Um, does an accountant have a, a role in, on, on one of these boards? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. They would um, most likely assist with fundraising and finance. Got so it. those are the types of positions and the types of skills and expertise that some of these boards are looking for. And setting budgets and watching the budget for those different organizations as the board um, progresses. Marketing, of course. Mm-hmm. All boards need marketing. What are some other categories so people can be thinking, do I have, the, uh, do I have some talents to bring? Absolutely. So architecture and interior design can help assist with the actual facility that you would be working with um, through the organization, um, marketing, advertising, Attorneys as well. But I would also uh, add that if you are, let's say you're a dancer, let's say that you are an artist, or let's just say that you're someone that works in retail, right? You are also someone that the board would be looking for for your particular expertise. Why don't we go around and have each one of you explain why you joined? Wow. (laughs) 
You can go first, Lillian. Sure. I vol- volunteer you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to start. So I've always had a passion for art. While I don't um, proclaim to be a um, an expert by any means, I do like to dabble in paint and um, things like that. And my grandmother was an artist, so it's always just been kind of embedded in me um, to continue that passion and participate. And, of course, I love to attend um, art openings and things like that at different museums around um, Dallas. So it led me to... Um, the business for the uh, business council for the arts. So I'm a photographer, but um, I went to school for architecture, and I'm not sure my uh, employers would appreciate me saying this, but I don't know how to draw without a <laughs> mouse, uh, without a computer mouse. So I love art and um, dance and performance art, and and I will often be in museums, but that's not how I can contribute, and so I can contribute. Architects, designers, we're trained as problem solvers. We do, we, we're not necessarily trained to draw, we're trained to solve problems in, with design. And uh, that's what boards are needing, is problem solvers. Um, and uh, I would say my journey started with me going to museums with my mother in Houston. Um, then I went to school, studied art history as well as business. And then I went to law school to uh, support and work with artists. So um, I found out about the Leadership Arts Program uh, and then applied for it, and we started working with Catherine Wagner over at Business Council for the Arts for this particular project. And uh, let's talk about why the arts are so important to um, the, the the fabric of a community. So, you know, um, Dallas, I, I would say even 20 years ago, was not known for being a, uh, a magnet for the arts. And, and now we really do have almost an international reputation because of the Perot and some of the other um, wonderful facilities. Why, why are arts so important? Um, I can... Uh, Attempt to answer that question. So Dallas is no longer what's known as a flyover state. Uh, most people think of East and West Coast in terms of arts, but the uh, there are so many things that are going on here in Dallas, both at a grassroots level and then also at an institutional level. You have uh, the Dallas Arts Fair, which is attracting galleries from all over the world. You have um, the Institute for Arts and Research that's at SMU. They just actually published a very good article on the value of arts and culture. I, I think that um, with the... Uh, philanthropic uh, nature of Dallas in general, as well as the uh, work of the Nashers and a lot of institutions and families who've been sort of working to organically uh, improve the arts in Dallas. I I think we're at a tipping point. You also have a lot of millennials Mm -hmm. and folks that are coming in from all parts of the country who have an appetite for the arts. And so it's just a, a great space and time to being in Dallas for arts and culture. And there's a lot of opportunity. What would you like to add to that? Um, I just, I don't think you can separate the arts and its patrons. And uh, it's, you know, uh, what is the word? Anthropological, you know, history, um, tying culture and civilization. You define a community, you define a period in time by the art and music and um, dance and plays that were written of that time. And those things don't really pay well. So they have to be funded and they have to uh, be fundraised. And uh, I don't think you can separate that. Um, I recently had a a visiting architect that we're working with out of England in town and he's making a couple of stops and we had a really long day at work and he's like, okay, I need to get home or back to the hotel to rest for a minute because I'm going, I made a point to go to the Dallas Symphony tonight. And tomorrow night he was going to the Chicago Symphony. And it's, it's great that when people come to town, they make a point to visit our art scene. And it makes you proud, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It very much does. It does make you proud. And I'm, when you say that, I'm reminded um, several years ago, Boeing was looking for a headquarters location. And Dallas was a top contender for that. But we were um, passed over because we didn't have what they considered a strong arts and cultural scene. But since that since that happened, our uh, our our scene is exploded and it's even just become more world renowned and artists want to come here and want to be here you know we're in line with new york and chicago and la and san francisco in terms of opportunities for artists and the arts district has just exploded i mean it's really become one of the hot spots in dallas yeah, oh, yes, absolutely. And there aren't too many places where you can go to a football stadium and see fine art or a <laughs> mall and see fine art, right? I mean, Dallas gets it, doesn't it? It does get it, yeah. I think um, Ray Nasher, who uh, 
was the founder for the Business Council for the Arts. You know, you can actually see for free within North Park hundreds of art installations that are just amazing and can't be seen really, you know, anywhere else. So it's a fantastic opportunity. And But the leadership on the board is critical to, to keeping each one of these organizations that we talked about um, vibrant. Uh, let's, let's talk more about how people can lend their talent. So if they, they come to the, the board fair, what are they going to experience? So uh, when folks come to the board fair, which is uh, next Thursday, May 4th, they uh, will be able to meet with various organizations who will be spread out throughout the beautiful Latina Cultural Center. There will be light bites as well as beverages, but they'll have an opportunity to speak one-on-one with representatives from organizations, one of which is the Perot, who will be there to give them information about how to join a board or what types of skills they're looking for, what types of expertise. So it's a um, open environment, very relaxed. It'll be a lot of fun, but it's a wonderful way and a very unique way to talk with various arts organizations about their board membership. Is there a lot of time commitment? Because I know a lot of people listening are, well, man, I'm so busy. I've got work and I've got family. When, if you join a board, if you sit on a board, does it take a lot of your time? Well, each board has their um, various requirements. They might have standing meetings, and it also depends on your various committees. You might be on a governing committee. You might be on a specific committee for, like, fundraising or something like that. But So each board has specific meetings that of which you must attend. But um, it's not any more of a time commitment than anything else that you're passionate about. Um, If you're passionate about the arts, if you're you're passionate about uh, culture, you might be a former musician and you see that uh, one of the organizations that's coming, I think it's Dallas Winds, you might see that they're there. So what could become time consuming now becomes a way for you to pursue your passion. So It's great networking too, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely, because there's so many different um, businesses that are involved, you know, between law firms and architecture and interior design firms, the Boys and Girls Club, things like that, organizations that just um, span um, the commerce community. And sometimes you're sitting on a board next to somebody that you would never, ever run into in, in any other way. Absolutely. There's a lot of um, rivers to bridge uh, by sitting on a board. And there, uh, the organizations that will be there are not necessarily just performance uh, groups, but maybe groups that sponsor um, kids getting involved in the, in the arts. Or uh, we t- spoke to a, a group recently that um, do outreach into uh, um retirement communities and so forth, and do performance at hospitals. And so there's a lot of different varieties of organizations to get involved in to help the culture in Dallas. And remind us again where it is and and what time it's going to be. So it's next Thursday, May 4th, um, at the Latino Cultural Center on Live Oak, just, just outside of downtown. Um, it's going to be from 6 to 8 and registration is online, and you can go to the um, Business Council for the Arts uh, website, and it gets uh, pretty obvious there on where to sign up. We'll also be doing tickets at the door, so if you didn't make it on sign up, please still come. It's a it's a great opportunity, and and I, I encourage all of my listeners if 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 you have some time on Thursday, uh, this is definitely worth your time, and we'll of course post something on our Facebook page as well. Um, thank you, ladies, for joining me, and and we'll have to have you back again soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Us. Thank you. All right, that's been this week's edition of the Jeff Crilly Show. We'll see you all next Saturday. <laughs>